BCY America presents Crosstalk, a nationwide call-in program discussing issues that have an effect on our families, our communities, our churches, our nation, and our world. Crosstalk, an opportunity for you to voice your concerns for biblical principles. And now live by satellite and around the world on the Internet at vcyamerica.org. Here is today's Crosstalk. Well, thank you, Gordon, and welcome to Crosstalk. Uh, I want to say a special word of thanks to many of our listeners, the Crosstalk listeners, who some uh, days back picked up your phones and called the news media dealing with the story of Kermit Gosnell and his grisly business. And you were literally reprimanding some of these companies, these news agencies, for not giving more public exposure to this stuff going on. Well, uh, a few days later, I was thrilled to hear a a news burst that showed up on Fox, and uh, they touched on the subject, and I was very grateful because I kind of had a feeling that your phone calls helped to make a difference. Anytime you have several thousand phone calls directed at one place, they can't help but listen to what you're saying. Well, today, there's been more things happening. Over lunch hour, I was listening to Fox News, and we need to find out what the details are because there's some shocking developments in the Kermit Gosnell trial as well. Our special guest is Cheryl Sullinger. She was with us before. She is with us again. She's a senior policy advisor for Operation Rescue, one of the leading pro-life Christian activist organizations in the nation. And Cheryl has been closely following the murder trial of the abortionist Kermit Gosnell. First of all, I'd like to say, Cheryl, welcome to Crosstalk. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure to be here. Speaking to us from Wichita today. That's correct. Is it warm down there or cold? Um, It's warming up. It actually snowed last night. (laughs) In Wichita? Yes, it did. Well, wow. Well, uh, we hope it warms up enough to keep that snow away. Well, Cheryl, you were with us two weeks ago, but there's been a significant development in the trial of this individual who's been performing this grisly trade of abortion. Kermit Gosnell. You told us about the gross uh, surroundings of this uh, this abortion mill. I mean, the stench of, of, of blood and, and, and animal feces and all the stuff that was there in this filthy place. And of course, it was finally brought to trial. Now, there was shocking news yesterday. Tell us about what's happened. Well, yesterday was the first day back in court since the prosecution rested its case. And um, yesterday, the defense attorney asked Judge um, Jeffrey Meinhardt to dismiss basically the entire case against Kermit Gosnell. Now, the judge didn't do that, but he did dismiss nine counts. But these are nine counts out of um, literally almost 400 charges that were um, that Gosnell has faced, but probably the most serious of the charges were three counts um, related to first degree murder of three um, little babies, and it appears even though Meinhardt did not um, elaborate on his reasons for dropping the charges, it appears that those three particular instances were those where there was actually. Um, the weakest of cases. Mm-hmm. Well, what were the conditions of of those cases which were dropped? Okay, the first was Baby Boy B. He was discovered in a freezer when they raided the clinic in 2010. And um, his little body had to be um, thawed for examination. And during that process, there was basically tissue damage that made... Um, finding out whether or not he was actually born alive inconclusive. And there was actually no firsthand testimony of anyone that saw him actually move. Um, they, 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 Gosnell was charged with murder in this case because the baby was so large and the baby had one of those um, wounds at the back of his neck oh. that um, where Gosnell would snip the spinal cord. So... Um, That case was actually um, dismissed. Then there was baby G, um, who was an unknown gestational age. That baby um, had what they called a respiratory excursion. In other words, the baby breathed. 
and then Gosnell snipped his neck in front of a witness. That witness testified that he saw him do that. That case was dismissed probably because it was one of the weaker weaker cases. And then there was Baby um, F. He was between 25 and 27 weeks gestation. And, again, that same employee, Stephen Massoff, testified that he saw Gosnell um, snip his neck after the, he saw a leg jerk and move. So those were probably the three weakest of the cases anyway with the least amount of eyewitness testimony associated with them. And um, I'm, just, I'm speculating that that's why the judge dismissed them. Well, you know, Cheryl, we're 10 blocks away from a piece of real estate that some years ago uh, housed a man uh, that, that his, his grisly trade involved beheading people. Uh, Jeffrey Dahmer was his name, mm. and the term Dahmer uh, has, has plagued the vocabulary of many people. And all it took to to deal with the fact that he found the heads of these people in his refrigerator and bodies in a vat which was using uh, acid or something to destroy the tissue. And 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 how much evidence do you need, Cheryl, to prove that somebody's killed a baby? Well, that's exactly what I think, too. I think that there was sufficient evidence for those, obviously. But um, they, just a, in a way of encouragement, there are still um, four um, cases of first-degree murder on the table and one case of third-degree murder on the table. And if Gosnell is convicted of any of those four cases of first-degree murder, you know, s- serious horrific circumstances surrounding these babies, a huge baby that wouldn't even fit in a plastic shoebox he was tossed into, Mm. Um, another baby who breathes for 20 minutes before he's brutally killed, Um, and it goes on. You know, if he's convicted of even one of those charges, the least that will happen is he'll spend the rest of his life in jail, and there's a possibility he could face the death penalty. One one worker testified that she saw more than 14 babies born alive in Gosnell's clinic. Mm -hmm. Uh, I believe it was Gosnell worker Karima Cross stated her training consisted of observing one ultrasound procedure, and then she was on her own. I mean, that was it. Yeah, no, the, the, the conditions at Gosnell's clinic were horrendous, and the training of his staff was um, minimal. He had some workers there that only had a sixth grade education, and um, they were giving sedation to women. And it was it was completely out of control. It was a completely out of out of control criminal enterprise. And um, I I have every confidence that. Um, Gosnell will be brought to justice. Well, Mm. today um, the defense rested without calling a single witness, and I think that really shows how he has no defense. They could put no defense up. All they have is um, alternate explanations and excuses for everything that the witnesses say happened there, and a lot of those have a lot of holes in them. So um, I think what we're going to see is a fiery oration on Monday, an attempt to sway the jury with impassioned talk. But in the end, the hard evidence supports murder convictions, in my opinion, from what I've been able to see in court. Cheryl, a testimony stated that at least twice a day, babies would be birthed before Gosnell ever arrived. What happened? Well, then, in that case, unlicensed, unqualified people would attend to the women who were giving birth. And then once the babies were born, these um, workers would take surgical scissors and stab them in the back of the baby's neck and snip the spinal cord. And um, that was done literally one, one witness admitted to having done it at least a hundred times himself. So uh, the grand jury report indicated that Gosnell could have been charged with literally hundreds and hundreds of counts of first degree murder. And instead they charged him with seven. And now of course that's down to 
four remaining charges. Folks, let me just share this, not trying to ruin your lunch. But I'll tell you what, it needs to affect us enough that we as a, as a society would say never again uh, and to take steps. Here, phony fetal ages given to the babies. These are just ages that were were uh, just dreamed up. Patients' charge, uh, charts were covered in blood. 47 aborted babies kept in cat food jars and other containers. Gosnell reported, or I'm sorry, Gosnell aborted the really big ones on Sunday when only he and his wife were present. Comment on media response to the trial. Interesting, Obama's lack of response to the Gosnell trial. Obama's new budget calls for $30 million more million in abortion funding. And would you believe that Obama, on Thursday night, will be giving the keynote address at Planned Parenthood's annual gala, a Time for Care dinner. Folks, I don't know about you, but I am losing my appetite. And this kind of situation going on in our culture is certainly enough to ring the alarm alarm bells. Now, let me ask you, Cheryl, is there still things that we can do as individuals responding to this uh, to the news media, can our phone calls still do any good in this regard? Well, actually, the the media has really turned the corner on this case. Okay. It's still not maybe um, as high on the headlines as we'd like to see it, but it has gotten coverage. Um, when I was in the court last week, there was a CNN reporter there every day. There was a Fox News reporter there, maybe not the same one, but somebody from Fox News there every day. There are about actually 20 reporters who are reporting on this um, on a daily basis. And unfortunately, the tragedy in Boston uh, bumped the reporting down on this case, but now it's starting to come back up. And once we see closing arguments and then a verdict, this is going to reach the top. Of the headlines again, and um, at that time, you know, we all as pro-life um, people need to be ready with a response to that, and um, you know, for good or for good or for bad. But I think the real important thing for people to understand is that at their local abortion clinics, similar situations are going on. Maybe not, um, you know, a complete replication of Gosnell's House of Horror. But some of the aspects of um, Gosnell's practice were are common uh, abuses in abortion clinics today. So, you know, I would just encourage people to contact their uh, local health departments and medical boards and demand inspections of their abortion clinics because we know that when abortion clinics are inspected by um, by people that are not influenced by a political agenda, when they're honestly inspected, abortion clinics cannot stand up to that kind of scrutiny because we still have not found a single abortion clinic in this country that complies with all of the laws. So we encourage people to contact their health department and demand an investigation into their own abortion clinic. Cheryl Sullinger, our guest today, she's Senior Policy Advisor for Operation Rescue. We'll be back in 60 seconds. Don't go away. Back to Genesis with Dr. John Morris, creation researcher at the Institute for Creation Research. Dr. Morris, how many people were alive at the time of Noah's flood? Chris, the Bible only gives us a few clues. It tells us that Noah was the 10th generation from Adam and that the average lifespan of the patriarchs was over 900 years. We're also told that each of the patriarchs had at least five children, but perhaps in 900 years they would have had many more children. Given the information that we have, we can conclude that there were probably millions of people alive in the days of Noah. The Bible says that the earth was filled with violence, therefore the earth must have been filled with people. The primary purpose of the flood was to wipe them all out, and it did a good job. Only Noah and his family survived the flood, and we're all descended from them, just like it says back in Genesis. For more on creation, visit our website at www.icr.org. For the Institute for Creation Research, I'm Chris O'Brien. Thanks for tuning in. And 
And welcome back to Crosstalk as we're visiting today with Cheryl Sullinger, the Senior Policy Advisor for Operation Rescue, talking about what's been going on with the Kermit Gosnell trial and uh, the significant developments that occurred. Many of you are shocked. Yesterday, Judge Jeffrey Meinhardt dismissed nine charges against Gosnell, including three counts of murder, one count of infanticide, and five counts of abuse of a corpse. And, of course, as you're aware, and as the story has unfolded, Mr. Gosnell even having trophies in bottles of little children's feet cut off and stored there as trophies of some kind. And, uh, I mean, does this not kind of get to the core of your soul and saying somebody has got to say something? Have we been silent too long? I'm going to say this kindly, but, folks, there have been churches that have stood by and watched as this happened and kind of even wrung their hands and say, oh, my, isn't this too bad? But have never spoken out, never encouraged people to stand outside of of an abortion clinic and and pray that God would somehow intervene in keeping a woman from destroying her children. Now, as we're talking, Cheryl, in the late 80s, early 90s, which seems like a, a millennium from now, we experienced some of this stuff where the abortion facilities weren't sufficient to handle the trade. We had eight abortion clinics in this town. And we found that in one case, in order to get rid of the fetuses, they were sending them out to a pet cemetery and were burning the fetuses along with cats and dogs in their crematory. Another situation, we were notified that an abortion clinic had approached the landlord of the, the leasing company or the property they were leasing, and it asked them to put in, quote, oversized garbage disposal units that could be used to take care of the waste material. I remember very seriously a a city official called me and said, Vic, we've got to do something, that there are little children going to industrial dumpsters out behind uh, professional business buildings and finding in little plastic shoeboxes little people. And the children are carrying these baby little people out to an overpass over the freeway and dropping them down for the cars to drive over. My goodness. This happened. I remember uh, Dr. Monica Miliorino Miller came to our TV studios one night, and she had some containers literally containing the bodies of little unburied fetuses that had been preserved because they had been put in dumpsters and not properly buried. And I'll never forget, as we made that public, uh, the health department shut down the pet cemetery that was burning uh, fetuses because they didn't have any permit to do that. I'm sure they opened later, but it shut that down. I'll, I'll never forget there were about three or 400 people outside of that place. And when we think in terms of what's happened here and then the strange alliance that goes on between, in this case, the police department was being offered by the abortion community a chicken and rice dinner for all of the police who was were giving favorable uh, preference to the abortion clinics. Mm. All of this stuff going on in just one city, our city, right here. And I'll never forget, even this very building we're in, we had a press office for the missionaries to the preborn up on second floor. And we gave them a, a room to use as their press office. This was not a, a planning room or anything of that nature. And the Milwaukee Police Department, according to the reports from from uh, the the folk there, that they placed a woman police officer, had her dress as a volunteer, and joined the people to get inside the building. One day I was pulling out through the driveway here, and a squad car was snuggled up next to the building with antennas on top of it, and there was firm belief that they had placed a bug in this press room that we had lent to the pro-life people. Hmm. All of these strange experiences over the years. I'll never forget the the solemn assembly that occurred here in the Milwaukee Arena where the Milwaukee Bucks played. There were 10,000 people that gathered one evening, 150 pastors that came as well and literally came to the platform and said, we will stand against this wickedness. I'll never forget the next morning, over 7,000 people from that crowd were outside of the Brown Deer Abortion Clinic here in the city. We've got tapes of those events. I've got tapes of that awesome assembly. 
And we've got videotapes of Christians being put in city buses, which were used as giant paddy wagons, people who did nothing but stood outside of abortion clinics and prayed. Well, thankfully, the report is I don't think there's any more than two abortion clinics left in Milwaukee, according to some reports. But folks, what are we doing? And Cheryl, what can we as Christians and family-concerned people do with this ongoing, disgusting, grisly trade that's now being honored by the President of the United States as he comes to give his his approval, the gala event, gala event called Time for Care. Well, I think this is a golden opportunity for pastors to be able to speak to their um, congregations about the matter of abortion. The fact that this Gosnell case is in the news, it's a national um, story. This is a golden opportunity for pastors to use this as a teaching moment for their congregations because we know that uh, a lot of the women, a large percentage of women that go to abortion clinics actually are people who go to churches. And so um, that's been actually a failure of the churches to educate the people and to um, help the people understand that as Christians, um, or as human beings, we shouldn't be having abortions, you know. But um, that's a good opportunity for pastors. But for lay people or just average citizens, it's a good opportunity, again, to contact your local health department if you have an abortion clinic in your community, to reach out to the health department and ask for an inspection of your local abortion clinic. Again, it, the surprise inspections are actually the best because um, if they know that the inspectors are coming, they try to clean up a little bit. But if they don't know, then that's when um, the inspectors really find um, the violations. And um, you would be shocked at the kinds of violations that are found in the average abortion clinic um, just on um, during an average routine inspection, really. So we have unlicensed workers that, that doing jobs that um, they are unqualified for. That's rampant. We have um, dirty conditions, sometimes the reuse of um, disposable surgical equipment, and that is so, so dangerous because it spreads disease um, from one woman to the next. We have... Um, uh, bad, terrible bookkeeping, I mean, uh, record-keeping. Abortionists are among the worst at keeping records. So if anything does happen to a woman, there's a complication. The people that have to care for her at the hospital or at the next doctor's office have no idea the kind of um, treatment that she got while she was at the abortion clinics. All these things are major violations. They create health hazards. Uh, the illegal disposal of human waste, like you were talking about before, that's absolutely rampant inside the abortion industry. There's lots, there's lots of things that um, you can alert your health departments to look out for when they go um, into an abortion clinic. And by the way, at Kermit Gosnell's abortion clinic, the reason that they had the bodies of the babies was because he had stopped paying um, the service that came in, um, got the babies for disposal um, the way that the laws require them to be disposed of. And so the bodies just piled up inside of the clinic. Mm. Um, so when the police finally did raid the clinic, they found all these bodies. And um, some were going down the garbage disposal. One man testified that the, the um, sewer system clogged up once or twice a week. He would have to unclog it. He found fetal remains in the clogs on a r routine basis. It was just absolutely horrific situation. But that kind of thing is going on in abortion clinics all across America. And folks, as Cheryl has pointed this out, abortion is a grisly business. And this is the kind of, you may say, what turns my stomach, I don't want to hear about it. Folks, you had better hear about it. Because this kind of wickedness is going on in your communities. And I want to say something that may shock some, and I'm not I'm not naming anybody or anything of that nature, but after the many years that I have served here at BCY America, I know many situations which could ring an alarm bell in the hearts of people. I am aware <clears throat> in one particular church uh, setting, many, yeah, many years back, a pastor's daughter became pregnant and an abortion was their alternative. 
uh, in the in the elders of the church, an elder's daughter became pregnant, and the church elder elected to have an abortion because they didn't want the infamy of <clears throat> a pregnant unwed mother in the church. You see, this covering of sin, there's only one covering, folks, that will cleanse sin, and that is the blood of Jesus Christ. And the sin that we are seeing going on in our world today is destructive, it is disgusting, and in the, in, in the nostrils of God, I'm sure it's a stench as he looked down at Sodom and Gomorrah, but he looks down now. Do you realize, <clears throat> and the other day my brother was saying this to me, he said, Vic, do you realize 53 million and counting abortions? If we were to take a city like Milwaukee and suburbs, about a million people, and have 53 of these cities filled with people, now across the nation, empty, nobody there. Does that not do something to you when you realize the magnitude of this? And realize, of course, everybody's moaning and groaning about having enough money for the Social Security payments. Do you realize that 53 million productive people who would be working today buying cars and commodities and, and, and equipment and furniture and homes and all this type of thing, but instead we have settled for the convenience of sinful behavior and instead have settled for the destruction of humanity. And folks, may I say that there's good reason to be concerned and praying for your nation. And like a song that we played this week, America, we weep for you because of what we have allowed to happen. Cheryl, you have a website. Where can people uh, get more information from your ministry? Um, Our website is operationrescue.org, and um, there you can see a complete archive of our coverage of the Gosnell case. We also have photos of um, the uh, the victims of Gosnell, along with all the mugshots, so you can become familiar with the people involved. And um, there's also the grand jury report, which is, in my opinion, a must-read for every Christian so that they really fully understand the scope of the horror that was going on inside of this abortion clinic and how that um, horror is repeated over and over and over in abortion clinics across America. Cheryl, I want to say how much we appreciate your keeping us informed and uh, the faithfulness of Operation Rescue. How many years now has that ministry been in operation? Um, Since uh, the late 80s, I believe. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, I've been involved since like 84, and then Operation Rescue happened a few years um, after I became involved in so I've been here in Kansas working with Troy and Operation Rescue since 2003. Again, that address again is operationrescue.org for more updates. And you can also get uh, mailing in information or uh, videos or whatever you may have there as evidence. Cheryl, I want to thank you for being with us today. You've been a blessing and encouragement even as our nation faces the crisis. God bless thank you. you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Have you ever had someone attempt to talk to you about the Watchtower Society or the Book of Mormon? Or perhaps a friend has told you they've started yoga and invite you to participate. You know you heard something about these religions and teachings, but never had the material in your hand to give a biblical response to their teachings. Well, now you can. Two world-renowned researchers, Dr. Ron Carlson and Ed Decker, have teamed up to write Fast Facts on False Teachings, an easy-to-use resource guide that gives you quick, clear facts about several cults and false teachings. You'll find chapters on atheism, Freemasonry, Hinduism and yoga, Islam, Jehovah's Witnesses, Mormonism, and much more. Fast Facts on False Teachings is available for a donation of $16 or more by writing VCY America at 3434 West Kilbourne Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, 53208. To make your donation by phone, call 1-800-729-9829. That's 1-800-729-9829. 
And welcome back to Crosstalk. I'd like to take the remaining part of this program, and we're so grateful for Cheryl Sullinger providing that information. A number of items have changed now. They have they have uh, submitted their final statements. It'll be before the judge. But as you saw, nine charges against Gosnell, including three counts of murder and one count of infanticide and five counts of abuse of a corpse, were literally dismissed. And uh, I don't know about you, but it puts a knot in my stomach when I when I think about this kind of behavior going on in the high-ranking areas of, of judicial, well, in my book, judicial tyranny. Tyranny against little children, the ones who can't represent themselves. But I want to open our phone lines, and I want to ask you a question. Now, this is going to be a little bit sticky. Uh, when is the last time you heard a message in your church on the wickedness of abortion? Okay, now I realize that's a loaded question. But when is the last time you heard a message in your congregation, a message from the pulpit, dealing with the wickedness of the taking of human life, the innocent children, abortion, killing? I'm not talking about a casual mention, but I'm talking about a very clear message about the wickedness of this type of behavior. And so I'm going to open our phone lines right now, 800-733-9829. Take your calls if you'd like to call and tell us. Now, it's not just that question, but among those responses from you, our listeners, many of you may want to respond to Cheryl Sullinger's words there. Maybe some of you have been seeing, as uh, at 1230 today, I was munching my sandwich and turned on Fox News on the car uh, radio, which we have satellite ability to hear the news directly from Fox. And they were in this hot and heavy dealing with the charges being dropped by the judge in the Kermit Gosnell trial. We'll take your calls, 800-733-9829, and all the lines are jammed right now. So uh, let's get the calls in here. We're going to open the phone lines to talk about it. And my question is, when we're talking about it, i got another question to add to it. What do you intend to do about it? There are good, responsible things that you can do about this. And as you see the abortion industry flourishing in your town, as you see, would you find the President of the United States going to honor Planned Parenthood? Uh, planned Parenthood? Uh, yes, Planned Parenthood. And when you see the chicanery of this grisly industry, millions of dollars, do you know that the new budget of Mr. Obama, though he cuts down on the money that it costs to take little school kids to walk through the White House on a tour, and he's shutting down the private airfields for general aviation and cutting down the and furloughing people who are there to provide safety for air travel, and then he can project $30 million more million in abortion funding. Something is wrong somewhere, folks, or is it just me? Maybe I'm confused, folks. Maybe I'm just sitting here and, and I'm totally disoriented. I want to hear from you today. 800-733-9829. We're going to go to Nick in Minnesota. And Nick, you're on the air. Hi. Um, I totally agree with you 100%. I think it's tyranny, absolute tyranny. And I think the church needs to wake up and we need to start start, you know, sticking behind what we believe, you know. We need to we need to step out. It's absolute tyranny and if we don't step up in the face of this evil, it's gonna overtake our country. People need to get angry about what's happening. <laughs> you know, I, I listen to the radio and I hear on the Christian radio stations I listen to, uh one caller asked about, you know, can I can I speak out? Should I protest? And he was told not to because he needed to respect his authority. Well, I need to say that this is not God's authority. The establishment that's put in place right now is not of God. It is not a godly authority. And we need to realize that. And we need to speak out. You know, we need to get out and beat the drum. I thank I, you. Thank you, Nick. I can yeah. understand the frustration you're facing. 
And I, I, I guess one of the things, and again, I'm not talking about ignoring the blood of Christ or, or, or the atonement for sin in a message, but has there been, have you heard recently a, a, no. over the pulpit a message that dealt with this wicked slaughter of innocent children? <clears throat> no. No, I haven't. And I've never heard it talk to us a slaughter of innocent children. You know, I feel that uh, people, you know, pastors, because of a 501c3, uh, they're they are enslaved to the government and they hold their tongue. May they I don't say, want may, to offend people. Nick, let me tell you this. Number one, if it's a church, you don't even need a 501c3. Amen. And there has yet to be a church that has lost its tax exemption because of preaching against abortion. So may I put to rest anybody that thinks that their 501c3 thing, first of all, a church doesn't need it. No. Organizations yeah. like VCY do, We have to because we are a nonprofit organization. I, we comply with the law, but the issue here is you have the right to discuss values and spiritual issues that affect your life. Yes, it, it, it's an obligation as far as I'm concerned that it should be preached from the pulpit. And I just, I, I just write on what you said. I just turned the radio station to this, and it's been something God's been stirring in my heart. And you how, know, my. Uh, how long have you been yeah. listening to VCY? How long have you been listening? I, I'm actually, I'm driving for work and coming through Wisconsin and looking for a Christian radio station, and I happen to come across this. So, first time listener, honestly, and first time caller. I just, like I said, I'm just real passionate about this, and I, I, I just, I just. I, I just needed to speak. Well, God oh, bless I, you, Nick. I, I want to thank you for doing that. And uh, if you got a pen handy, don't do, dr- don't drive in the ditch. But you, no, you no, can you can yeah, li- you can listen to us anywhere in the world on the planet okay. on the internet. And if you simply go to vcyamerica dot org, vcyamerica dot org, and uh, click on Listen Live. And we have people listening in Spain. We have them in Europe. We have people in, uh, in fact, New Zealand, Australia. People okay. listening all over the world, and you can listen to us anywhere. Well, God bless you. God bless you and your ministry. And drive safe, Nick. Bye. Bye-bye now. Okay, thank you so much. Let's go to Shano, Wisconsin, and talk with Bill. Bill, you're on the air. Hi, Hi Vic. Uh, I just think it's horrific what they're doing to our, our children. I don't think it's a fetus. It's a baby. In the Bible, it never mentions about a fetus. It's a baby. But the pastor did, the only time the pastor... Well, I don't go to that church anymore. Mentioned it was usually on the anniversary of Roe versus Way uh, in January. We'd have it in March, so there'd be about three or four people from the church going. And that's pretty. He never really mentioned how horrific it was. But I remember talking to one. Uh, there was a Bible. I mean, a medical staff that I had talked to him uh, before this. Uh, well, it wasn't back in January or whatever it was, and he mentioned he was for abortion. But he said that how awful, you know, some people are for abortion, but how awful is the other people are for um, a death penalty? He was talking about Republicans. Mm. I don't think I had an issue on there, but, but who, uh, who uh, ordained a death penalty? It's God. We're all under the death penalty because of our sins. Mm. But it's horrific, horrific. So we have to stand up for truth. God. Bill, thank you. From Shano, Wisconsin. Appreciate the call. Okay, brother. Bye-bye. I want to say this again. I want you to know, and I have this on good authority, that there are some pastors who hesitate to talk about abortion on the pulpit because there are people in their congregation who have had them, and they're afraid of offending people with the truth that God can bring comfort if someone had committed this thing, had literally had aborted their children that God will forgive as repentance comes before the Lord. But there are those who are afraid to talk about it for fear they'll offend somebody. And folks, the church is not a place for political correctness. It should be biblical correctness in my book. Let's go to Wagner, South Carolina, and we're going to talk with Ruth. Ruth, you're on the air. Hi. I was listening to this broadcast, and I'm having a hard time talking about it, and I'm sorry. That's all right, ma'am. I understand. During the, during the broadcast, I started writing a letter, to, uh, an email to my pastor, hmm. and I asked him if he would look up Kermit Gosnell trial on the Internet if he had not been hearing about it. Mm-hmm. And there's over 400 mentions of it, 400,000 mentions of it. And I asked him to look it up 
and to make an announcement tonight that everyone should call their health depart- local health department and ask for a checkup, an inspection of the local abortion clinics uh, because so many of them will not pass it and it will harass them. And I've asked him to make that announcement, asking our people to do that mm. today. God bless you, Ruth. Right on target. Thank you. Wagner, South Carolina. Appreciate that. Yes. Yes, and thank you for your broadcast. How, how do you God how do you hear us in South Carolina? On the internet. Internet. Well, God bless you. Tell ten friends to join us. I do all <laughs> okay. the time. God bless you. Bye bye now. Let's go to Bayview, Wisconsin. We're talking to Mike on line three. The phone number eight hundred seven three three nine eight two nine. Mike, you're on the air. Vic, I I left the Catholic Church because we never ever heard the word of abortion, along with everything else that's happening in this country. Hmm. We watched VCY America one time, and I saw Pastor Matthew Truella on there, and I went out and stood with my wife holding those large aborted baby pictures on one of his tour stops, and I've been to his church ever since then, and I can Hmm. tell you, Vic, I swear that he doesn't, there's not a week that goes by that that man does not stand up for the children and anything else that's filth in this world. So if they want a decent preacher, Matthew Truella, it's on Tuesday nights on your show. Mm. And what a blessing he's been. Thank you, Mike. Along with your station. God bless you guys. Mike, and uh, be careful as you stand outside of those abortion clinics. Absolutely. You know it. <laughs> Yes. You know it, brother. Yes, thanks so much. Thank you. God bless you. I'm going to share this with you that I recognize Mike, who's uh, one of our cameramen. And uh, he was at an abortion clinic just a few weeks ago and was threatened by an individual with a knife. And if it hadn't been for certain circumstances that protected him, there could have been a serious situation. And uh, so, folks, these are people that simply stand there praying with a picture of what the product of abortion is. Let's uh, go to Beth in Chicago, Illinois. Beth, you're on the air. Hi. Um, I'm calling because I'm, I, I don't understand how you consider the people in the state of Israel who have the highest abortion rate and who follow the Talmud, which is a very evil book which endorses abortion, how you consider them God's chosen people. Ma'am, first of all, what chapter and verse in the Talmud are you suggesting? Would you read it to me for me? I don't have it. I'm, in, I'm, off, I'm on the road. I don't have the Talmud handy. I try okay. to stay away from that evil book. I see. Well, that's something you'll have to deal with because uh, I, I know many, many Jewish people and many Jewish organizations are standing for pro-life. So I'm not sure what the groups you're talking about, but uh, the the situation I'm talking about here is that life is sacred. And one of the very first laws that you find, thou shalt not commit murder, thou shalt not kill. John in Salina, Kansas, you're on the air, John. Go ahead. Hello, John. Hi, hi, Vic. How are you? Fine, sir. Um, you know, I, I'll tell you what, John. I, John, I'm going to ask you to hold there because we're at a break. And uh, we'll be right back. You're the next one in line. Please stay on the line. We shall return in just one minute. For the Worldview Weekend Minute, I'm Brandon House. Our website's worldviewweekend.com. We're continuing our series on a biblical worldview and money, 20 points. We're on point number eight today. A wise man does not trust in riches. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 17 speaks to this. Now, as we've explained, there's nothing wrong with money or having money. It's really neutral. It's not money that's the root of all evil. It's the love of money. And we don't place our trust in our money. We place our trust in the Lord Jesus Christ alone. Number nine, a wise man understands that real money is gold and silver, and God owns it all. Haggai 2 verse 8 speaks to this. A wise man understands that real money is something that has intrinsic value, not a fiat paper currency that can be inflated at the whim of the politicians and the central bankers. So a godly man or a wise man understands what is of real value, what's a real hard asset, and they have diversification. The Bible speaks to that as well. We'll continue on our next program.
And welcome back to Cross Talk, where John is standing by in Salina, Kansas. And John, you're on the air. Uh, yeah, I, you know, I've left several churches because the one church that I'd gone to for years, it just seemed like after a while it was, you know, just really nothing. I mean, he never really talked about any issues. Uh, and so I left there, and then I went to another church. I mean, he was good there at the other church, but nothing still, not really with the issues. And like I said, I've been listening to you guys for at least six, seven years, and I've got more from you than I have. And, of course, your lineup is just great. Well, John, our prayer is that many dear pastors will will realize the need for calling truth what it is. yeah. And I think some of them are intimidated, some are afraid, uh, they don't want to offend, and, and they're not trying to be supportive of this I, wicked trade. Oh, I agree with that, too. And, you know, and I try to tell my father-in-law, but he's just, he just won't listen, so. He's a pastor? No, he's, uh, well, my brother-in-law is a priest, but uh, it's sad to say that, you know, uh, for what he has in his church, I, I, I can't go there. He he has a, a basically a homosexual couple in there, and I I, I just cannot see. Uh, to me, if I went there, I would be condoning the same thing that he does. John, thank you from Salina, Kansas. We're going to move to Port Huron, Michigan, and uh, Port Huron, you're on the air. Port yeah, Huron. Thank you so much, Vic, for this. Uh, I and I first of all, I want to just thank you that that you speak for life so much, and I think out of all the things that you do. I think this is the most important show that you can do. I I love the others, but speaking for life, it, we need to speak up for the unborn. And as as you, to answer your questions, uh, the pastors I have I don't I, in a church as I've been in, I've never heard a pastor speak mm-hmm. about pro life issues. And what they feel, fail to realize is, you look back in the 1860s when slavery was ended. The reason slavery was ended is because God's people spoke out against the evils of it. Mm-hmm. And um, people need to know that. And if I lived in a town where there was an abortion clinic, I would be down there every day praying. Um, there is a group called 40 Days for Life, uh, Vic, and um, they're going to have this fall mm-hmm. another campaign. And they just go and pray in front of abortion clinics, and uh, people are leaving the clinics. 28 have, have closed in five years three, the last campaign that we did. You know, Harry, I saw the story of the abortionist herself yes. who was there and became so convicted that she left her job and went out and stood with the pro-lifers. Yes. And that was at one of those 40 Days for Life. Absolutely. Yep. And if we have everybody, if, I'd love to see Sean Carney or somebody on from, from them if you, if you, uh, this fall when the campaign gets closer, because if we got 95 radio stations, maybe hopefully more by then, and you got all these pro-lifers, and there are towns that are with abortion clinics, I'm sure, listening, uh, people in those towns listening to Cross Talk. And if they were out there, my goodness, what, what a, an effect that would have. Thank you so much, Harry, for your call in Port, Port uh, Shurn. Uh, Bangor, Wisconsin, Jerry standing by. Jerry, you're on the air. Yes. Uh, Vic, I'd like to inform you that uh, about an hour and a half ago, Jay Carney, the president's spokesman, came out and said that Obama has chickened out about giving that speech at that pro uh, at the. Uh, 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 Vic, help me out. I can't remember the name of that. Now the the uh, Planned Parenthood thing. Right, right. He he said the reason why he doesn't have time to go there because he he wants to spend more time with the people that were killed during that fertilizer plant explosion. That's his excuse. So he's not going to speak at that uh, pro uh, uh, time for time for care or dinner. Right, right. Yeah. Exactly. Well, I didn't catch that news item, but if that is the case. No, uh, I lost the case. Uh, yeah. He is not going to go. You know what it was? It was the pressure of the VCY listeners who's been calling the White House, who's been calling all these people, all the senators and congressmen and, and who else. It was beautiful. I love you and I love your show. God bless you. God bless you, Jerry. Thank you so much for your call from Wisconsin. Uh, we have open lines, 800-733-9829. Just a couple, three more minutes left, but we'll take your calls quickly. West Bend, Wisconsin. And Janet, you're on the air. Go ahead. Hello, Janet. Hello. Mm-hmm. Um, 
I am uh, thinking about uh, bumper stickers again. Great. And and uh, honk in, for impeachment. And um, something about talking about it when you go to the hospital and get scans and things. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you can put up any signs or... Well, those are things that you have to do as you're convicted there, and I appreciate the suggestion. One last call coming in from the United Kingdom. Uh, Robert from England, you're on the air. got about a minute. Hi, Vic. Um, It's just on my heart to give a very quick response to the lady that asked about um, Israel. Yes. And the point is that um, God has a special plan for the Jews. Yes. And we pray for them in spite of them being there in unbelief. Mm -hmm. And we pray that God will open their eyes and reveal to them the truth about these things. And when you get to know Israeli people, they're lovely people, but we we just need to be burdened in prayer for them, that God will open their eyes and show them the truth. Amen. Robert, thank you for uh, well, putting the you, capstone Vic. on the program today. We always appreciate you. Thank you. Bless you. From England, that's our last call for today. I want to thank you for calling and uh, invite a friend to listen. Join us here on Crosstalk each day, and as you hear, people can listen anywhere in the world by going to vcyamerica.org and just simply click on live at 2 o'clock central every day here and, of course, the different time zones, and we thank the Lord for our listeners in New Zealand and England and Australia and Spain and uh, other countries all around the world. Over 44 countries now are getting reports from people listening to programs from VCY America. And so we thank you, and thank you for praying for VCY America. We're here. We thank God for every station, every manager that carries our program. They provide the airtime free of charge to us, and our commitment to you is to bring truth and information to you as well. I want to thank you for praying for us. Pray for the entire team. Pray for Brother Jim, yours truly, and all the people behind the scenes that make this program possible every day. So thanks for joining us today. May the Lord bless you and guide you as we face the challenges of today. to Crosstalk via satellite and the Internet from VCY America. Views expressed may or may not be those of this station. For a CD of today's program, send a donation of $6 or more to VCY Take Ministry, 3434 West Kilbourne Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, 53208, or download by RSS or podcast from CrosstalkAmerica.com. And join us again for Crosstalk. Crosstalk.